Well, welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews in Northern Ontario. It's a beautiful day today. The sun is out. It's just gorgeous. And we're going to continue on with this project of me putting a fridge up at my camp, a regular 120 volt fridge. I'm going to turn you around. I'm going to show you exactly what we got going in the back of this uh, little uh, control center here that I built and how it's going to change. So let's get to that right now. Okay, this is what we've got right here. We've got this 400 watt power inverter. We've got these two batteries. I am going to add two batteries, take the stand out. I built the new stand. You've seen that in the last video. And uh, you can see the two power cords that I put in here. And they go underneath and they come out here and they plug into there. Now, into that receptacle goes into my room on a switch and it's the only 120 volt inverter power that I have. One of these legs goes to the ceiling lights and the other one goes to the receptacle on the uh, floor, uh, sorry on the wall and uh, that is switched off and on. So I'm going to bring you inside and I'm going to show you what I've got so far with the fridge. I built a little bit of a cabinet for it and I'll show you how it's all hooked up and ready to go so far. Okay, here we are here. I just got my level out, so I leveled out the two ends here. And I've been doing some work and I moved this stand over to there. And this is for my uh, um, recharging cell phones and that kind of stuff. And you could see I've got this switch on the wall and that powers this outlet. And I have one power bar here that you can switch this off and on either for the TV or for there. So here's the fridge and here's the little stand that I uh, built for it just so it's a little bit higher up and uh, I'm going to uh, get everything all set up. I'm going to get the two extra batteries. I'm going to hook that all up. I'm going to mount everything in there and then we're going to do some testing. Now I will tell you that I tried this fridge at home and it started up and it only ran for 25 minutes and I thought that's not bad I thought it was going to take like an hour or maybe even two 25 minutes it shut off and it got cold as well so let's uh, let's get everything all ready and I'll bring you back we're back day two what happened last night guys <laughs> got a little bit of a story here for you things went sideways Big time. Okay, I'm gonna explain a couple of things here first. The fridge is phenomenal. It's working out like a dream. I'll show you here. It's all loaded up. I got everything in there. It's working great. I'm gonna take you out here to the control center here. I'm gonna show you the specs on this. And I'm gonna explain to you, well, sometimes it goes sideways on you. Let's go out there, let's take a look. Okay guys, I'll just show you here. This is with no load on, uh, roughly two amps. And uh, I'll show you the other meter. I'll just put that on here, just to verify it. And uh, I've been doing quite a bit of testing out here. And one point nine seven I think that says yeah so the no load is actually higher than what I was told I was told it was going to be under an amp to me it looks like it's two I'm gonna take you inside I'm gonna show you some uh, some interesting things okay so there's the voltage readout right now 13 8 the batteries are fully charged and what I did is I hooked up a line here this is a cat 6 line going to that inverter so what I do is I turn it on turn it off I got two uh, conductors in there when you short them out it will actually turn the unit on for uh, charging and off it turns the unit off it doesn't turn it off completely it goes down to about uh, oh, 200 milliamps which is fine and uh, I'll take you out to the uh, to the control panel again and show you what it looks like when the fridge is on because I just heard the fridge kick on now. Okay guys, what I did is I tried my Fluke 
It's exactly the same as this one here. Five amps. And that's with the fridge running. And if you take a look at my control panel here, 16 amps. It's charging and voltage is 14.6. And let's get to my disaster that was happening here yesterday. I was wiring this all up and I energized the, uh, the breaker for it and the machine didn't go on and I thought uh oh what's wrong here so I took this panel off here I got the positive negative studs measured right here two volts that's all we had was two volts and I thought well that's not good so I went from this post and I went to the positive 13.1 I went from this post to this post, two volts. So I knew for sure this was no good. And here's this one right here, it's defective. I was dropping around 11 volts through here. So yeah, that's the uh, difference there. So now the fridge must have just gone off down to 1.8, 1.9. Lucky I brought a backup with me to replace this here. And uh, now it's purring like a kitten. I'm going to grab a nice cold beer. We're going to go out to the shop. And I'm going to tell you my results. Okay, so this is how it went. I put the other two batteries in there. So now I've got four T605 batteries. Roughly 800 amps. When I first plugged the fridge in, it ran for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, then it shut off. So, what you've seen in the fridge there today, that's what I put in there last night. Then the fridge started to cycle 15 minutes on, 5 minutes off. So I timed it today and it slowly reduced the amount of on time to the point where now my fridge is running roughly three minutes on seven to eight minutes off everything in there is nice and cold the ice box is frozen it is just bang on terrific now I didn't realize how much adding all that warm material would affect it but from the time I started it up it took about six, seven hours before it started to stabilize. When I first plugged it in, it was 13.1 voltage on my batteries. This morning when I woke up at seven o'clock, it was 12.47. Didn't start to get sunlight on my panels till about uh, nine o'clock in the morning and they started to charge about uh, two, two and a half amps. And then by about 11 o'clock, well, you could see it's, I seen 22 amps at one time. So they've completely recovered. I've got lots of capacity. Yes, you can use a regular like bar fridge like I have if you have an off-grid place. It works terrific. You can't take one of these and put it into say, like a back of a pickup truck or something like that. No, you're going to have to go with uh, the ones that are made for that. There's a lot of DC fridges out there. They're like five times the price minimum. But they're made with a compressor that actually has rubber isolators on it for the vibrations that you'll get in a, in a vehicle. So you can't take this and put it in a vehicle. This only works in a stationary situation. Now, when I phoned Triplite, they said under an amp. And I've measured this four different times, and I'm seeing what to me you've seen is close to two amps, which is fine. I've got lots of capacity left over. And uh, when it comes to the, uh, the fridge cycling off and on, my batteries do not go down hardly at all when I'm only getting, you know, a 30% uh, duty cycle. So it's only on 30% of the time. Over, 
you know, the eight hour period overnight, I hardly noticed anything. And anybody that has, you know, like off grid places to go from a fully charged bank of 12.6 to, you know, if you drop maybe two points, say 12.4, uh, that's hardly anything. So this thing is efficient. It runs great. The only thing I know is the next time I come up, I've got to start the fridge up during daylight hours because you do have a lot of, I guess, thermal heat from all the stuff that you have in there that's got to be cold as well. So it does take about six hours for it to actually cool down and stabilize so it doesn't run so often. So I thought that was a great experiment today and uh, I like the idea of learning on YouTube how to do diagnostic te testing on automotive uh, vehicles because today just a simple use of a meter showed me that that breaker was defective and you know what there's a lot of people that have never tried using a multimeter and testing does actually save you a lot of time and a lot of money it only took me two minutes tops to diagnose what was wrong. And I thought that's terrific. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a uh, update on the uh, fridge of my camp. Now I've got a fridge all the time for a nice cold beer. So thanks for joining me here today. If you haven't seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe. Come back again now, hey eh, guys? Cheers.